Championship is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Welcome to Salt Lake City from the gorgeous Rocky Mountains to the Great Salt Lake. This is the setting for the biggest event in the history of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, and it's right here at the Maverick Center. And we kick tonight's monumental event off with our prelim fights. We have three bangers, highlighted by two hard-hitting cruiserweights in Rodriguez and Vandermeer. And then later on, three championship bouts. Our co-main event, the epic rematch for BKFC 41, flyweight champion Christy Faria, and the first ever women's champion, Beck Rawlings. Bad blood might be an understatement as Howard Davis challenges Ty Stewart for his featherweight world title. And then, the biggest title in all the organization, the heavyweight championship is vacant. And tonight, former champion Arnold Adams will collide with Vic Terrell for the gold. And finally, the biggest fight in BKFC history happens tonight with the winner being named the King of Islands. Undefeated, unstoppable Platinum Mike Perry goes to war with one of the greatest fighters in his generation, the underground king, Eddie Alvarez. And we are live here in the Maverick Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah, folks. What a night. It is going to be historic indeed for BKFC 56. Now, not only will this be the biggest event ever in the history of the promotion, it's also the first ever bare knuckle event in the state of Utah. So you got to believe we are coming in here with a bang, bringing the best here to Salt Lake City. Now, folks, we want you to be a part of it all. Not just these fights you're about to see, but we want you to see the main card. We want you to see the title fights. We want you to see the King of Violence. And for you to do that, you have got to get the pay-per-view right now. However you get it, is it Fight TV? Is it the BKFC app? Or is it going to be on your local cable and satellite providers? No matter how you got to get it, be a part of history tonight here at BKFC 56. And while we're talking about picking things up, how about the official BKFC app? For $7.99, if you get our subscription, not only are you going to get live events all throughout the year, you're going to get access to all of our archives as well. And there have been some incredible shows in the history of this promotion. You're also going to get exclusive content like the Bare Knuckle Show with Brian Socha. Heck, you can even pick up a BKFC t-shirt there or maybe a hoodie since we're in Salt Lake. It is a little bit cold here. I will say that. Well, folks, it's about time to get down to business. And to do that, we go ringside to our commentary crew, Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. Now, listen, Sean, with all of these great fights, with the title fights, the debut of Jeremy Stevens, we haven't even talked about that. There's one thing that's overshadowing it all. It's the king of violence, Mike Perry, Eddie Alvarez. And Mike Perry has definitely shown he's a violent man here. Cyrus, Mike Perry has been outstanding in BKFC. He enters tonight's main event at 175 pounds versus Eddie Alvarez with a record of 3-0. Perry signed his BKFC contract December 2021, and he was immediately called out by Julian Lane while Chris and I were interviewing Mike Perry on the broadcast. Perry then made his BKFC debut versus Julian Lane February of last year at Knucklemania 2. Perry winning a unanimous decision versus Julian Lane. Next up, BKFC's UK debut, August of last year with London's famed Wembley Arena. Perry defeated Michael Venom Page by majority decision as the fight went to the overtime round. Then this past April, Mike Perry defeated former UFC and Strike Force middleweight champion Luke Rockhold by second round TKO. Chris, Mike Perry continues to roll. Next stop, Eddie Alvarez in tonight's main event. Mike Perry just keeps getting better. He keeps evolving. He understands the sport now. The more he does it, the better he gets. Well, Chris, you know, one thing that they always say is that to fight in this sport, and you would definitely know this, you have done it a few times, you have got to have that dog in you. And there's one fighter that definitely has that dog in him. He's had it his whole career. That's Eddie Alvarez. Exactly. That's one of the reasons we were so excited when Eddie Alvarez came to this sport. We knew what he was. He can not only be a great hammer, but he's a great nail. He's been knocked down several times, but he always gets back up. He always answers that bell. We knew that's what it takes to be great at this sport. He has it, and he showcased it in his first fight, and he definitely feels like he can do it again tonight. Eddie Alvarez enters this main event for the King of Violence title of BKFC versus Mike Perry. 1-0 and in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Alvarez, both the UFC and Bellator 155-pound champion. Nothing but great opponents on there. Gaethje Chandler, unbelievable accomplishment to beat those fighters, Sean. Well, let's talk a little bit about 
the odds. Now, I got to stay with you on this one, Chris. You're our specialist here. You're our expert. When you take a look at those odds, what sticks out to you? What would you take a flyer on here tonight? So many good fights right here. So much to bet on. The thing that's jumping out of me right there, Howard Davis has been on another level lately. So good. He really feels like he's going to take that title. I feel at minus 180, that is a great bet. Well, here's how you are going to lay down those wagers tonight. It's very simple. Take out your phone and scan the QR code on the screen. Pick where you want to bet, how you want to bet. We are giving you that freedom tonight. Make tonight that much more interesting. And heck, make some money tonight here on BKFC 56. Let's take a look at your rules brought to you by MIT 45. All fights scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Fights are scored by three judges on a 10-point must system. It's very important. The hand wraps must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch is allowed. No three knockdown rule. No being inside by the bell in any round. No kicks, knees, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. And now our first, Crescent Tools. Tell the tape. We open tonight with a bout in the lightweight division. LJ Schultz versus Danny Hilton. And you can see here, Sean, Hilton does have a significant five-inch height advantage as well as a five-inch reach advantage. He knows that Schultz wants to get in and throw those overhand rights to land power shots. It's up to Hilton to keep him away, keep him at bay with those ones and twos. This is the BKFC debut for Danny Hilton. He's a veteran of 13 pro MMA bouts. Hilton 3-0 in professional boxing. In our fighter meeting, Danny Hilton told us his main focus coming into this is BKFC debut is fighting from the distance and Chris being very technical from distance. He wants to use that in and out style, utilize that length. He wants to start long as the fight moves on, mix it up, then get inside. Confuses the opponent by not knowing where the range is going to be. Hilton said of his opponent in this lightweight bout, LJ Schultz. I think he's going to be very aggressive off of scratch. Hilton said, I respect the power of Schultz. I have to be aware of his overhand. So I want to gain my timing, hit my counters, and pick him apart from range. And by doing that, he wants to be a slick boxer out there. But by doing so, throw a lot of volume, make his opponent always see punches coming at him the entire fight. Fighting here in his home state, Utah. This is the BKFC debut for LJ Schultz. Schultz has had 12 pro MMA bouts, two in pro boxing. Schultz in our fighter meeting used the word havoc. He said, I love the havoc of fighting. Schultz also told us, I want to keep coming forward. He said, I feel I have legitimate knockout power in both hands. I am not concerned with taking punches from Danny Hilton to plan my knockout punches. I really like the interview with Schultz. He felt like a very intelligent fighter out there. He understands he needs to be more accurate with this style of fighting. He wants to be evasive, elusive, give a lot of different looks, but the main thing he has to make his opponent pay when he gets opportunities, land those shots. Of his opponent, Danny Hilton, LJ Schultz said, I think he's a good MMA fighter, but with that, Schultz said, I think Hilton is a submission-based MMA fighter. I don't think his striking can match my level. I think he'll try to park himself on the outside. I'm going to time my entries when he throws it across. Wants to get inside with feints, head movement, and get inside and encounter his opponent's wild shots. BKFC 56, to get our evening started, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you one and all to the Maverick Center here in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah! And we welcome you to BKFC 56. BKFC for review begins tonight with five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Introducing you first, 
Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears pink and black. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 155 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 16 fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Prescott Valley, Arizona, here is Danny Hilton. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and blue. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 155.9 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 14 fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut, fighting out of Clearfield, Utah. Here is LJ. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Danny Hilton told us I want to immediately establish my reach advantage. My jab is the key to my victory. Round number one. Black and blue trunks for LJ Schultz. Black and pink trunks for Danny Hilton. Hilton immediately arranged. There's that jab. And Sean, you can already just see the reach factor right there that Hilton has. Hilton six foot tall to Schultz's five foot seven. Stiff jab, another jab from Hilton. Schultz on the jab, that was Perry. Lock forward pressure, right hand, there's the counter right hand. And Schultz has got to be careful, those jabs are going to do a lot of damage. This isn't MMA, this isn't boxing, this is bare knuckle. Schultz coming forward. Again, Schultz said, I will take the shots of Hilton to land my power punches, but he takes that power jab to Schultz from Hilton. Schultz now on the back foot, swelling under the left eye of LJ Schultz. Stiff jab again from Danny Hilton. 115 remaining round number one. So Schultz has got to do something a little bit different. Hilton's doing a good job of just staying long, trying to use that reach. Overhand left, not getting through from LJ Schultz. Schultz isn't trying to get inside. He's waiting for his opponent to come to him. Schultz now bleeding under his left eye. 55 seconds remaining, round number one. There was the hook jab from Hilton just off the mark, but it kept Schultz off of his line. Overhand right on the entry for LJ Schultz. Couldn't get in, takes that jab. Counter left hand. You can see Schultz has a very good chin, but man, big overhand right from Danny Hilton. Need hook not landing for LJ Schultz. Strong opening round to this point for Danny Hilton with 30 seconds remaining, round number one. Hilton looks good on his bike right now, moving when he needs to, staying out of range. Exactly what he needs to do. Need hook not there for Hilton. Schultz staying on the outside. Hilton staying at range exactly where he wants to be, playing off of that long jab. There's the hook, overhand right, just misses from Schultz. Stiff jab, big one, two. Hilton really turned over the right hand. Forward pressure again for Danny Hilton. There is the bell. Big round right there for Hilton. Looked fantastic. Stayed in exactly his range. He stayed where he can land punches. And his opponent cannot. That's exactly what you want to do in this. Schultz has got to change things up a little bit. He's got to start pushing the pace. He looked a little too relaxed out there, Sean. Understanding this is not boxing. You can't give away any rounds right here. He's got a bad cut underneath that eye. At least it's not over the top. UFC and Bellator veteran Dan Moran in the corner of Danny Hilton. Okay. And you can see right here just powerful overhand right. By Hilton. Good jab, good one-two, landed right on the jaw. Like I said, Schultz is extremely tough. He took a lot of hard shots there and didn't seem to be wobbled at all. Very bad mouse right there. Jeez, if that eye swells up anymore, they might stop this fight. Come over the top and a mouse underneath. Seconds out called. Trying to get up. The work of BKFC Cutman Extraordinaire Pat McPherson. Dealing with those two cuts plus the deep swelling left eye of LJ Schultz. Now a medical timeout called by referee Andrew Glenn. Uh, that, that eye is very swollen. They might not let this one continue already. As the chief medical officer of BKFC, Dr. Don Muzi, working in conjunction with the over. Commission. Wow. Fight is over indeed. The stoppage on the left eye and the win in his BKFC debut for Danny Hilton. He looked fantastic out there. You could just see the way he was controlling the range, stood exactly what you want to do. You want to stay where you can land shots and your opponent can't. If you have that reach, a lot of people have reached and they don't utilize it properly. So they get in too close, they let their opponent land shots. Hilton didn't do it, he did a great job.
Two cuts around the eye, the cut on the bridge of the nose, but Chris, ultimately, that is the deep swelling that badly is impeding the vision in Schultz's left eye. And, and that's the problem. It wasn't really the cut, it was the swelling. You feel like Schultz cannot see any more out of his left eye. That means a lot of right hands are gonna land. LJ Schultz was definitely game. And he told us, he used the word havoc, I enjoy. In fact, he said, I love the havoc of fighting. But Danny Hilt didn't create havoc. He created technique at range, continually pumping that stiff jab. Well, Sean, we talk, like you said, we talk about reach and range, and, and Hilton use it to perfection. That's what you want to see every time you see somebody with that reach. Stay outside, stay in your range. Don't get into their range. Beautiful jab. Really impressive from Danny Hilton. Staying on the outside. He laid out in our fighter meeting exactly what he felt he had to do. Stay long. Again, he said, my jab is my key to victory. And Chris, that played out exactly. You love it when people tell you that, and, and, they, and they are true, they're honest, and, and, and it goes just like the way they said. It was perfect. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of our ringside physician, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number one. For your winner, by TKO, Danny Hilton. What a performance by Danny Hilton. Looked great out there, did exactly what he wanted to do, had a game plan, stuck to it, and got the victory. Class in victory, class in the post fight. Again, LJ Schultz showed his toughness, but that jab, the right hands, key to the victory. The winner by way of first round TKO due to physician stoppage, Danny Hilton defeats LJ Schultz. Let's go! Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC56 at BareKnuckleShop.com. There's a huge selection of hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. So place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. You can use promo code BKFC56 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. To the welterweight division we go. Trevor Bradshaw versus Troy Dennison. Sean, this is one of those odd situations where you have Troy Dennison, who has a two-inch height advantage. However, a one-and-a-half-inch reach disadvantage. This is bout number one in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship for Troy Dennison. He's had 16 pro MMA bouts. Dennison told us in our fighter meeting he wants to stay long, fully utilize his reach advantage. Dennison said, I think that I'm going to be much faster than my opponent, Trevor Bradshaw. I want to throw an active, fast jab from distance. Well, he said he wants to be first in all these exchanges. He wants to push his opponent back. Doesn't feel like he can fight off of his back foot. He wants to utilize that in and out motion when at all possible. Dennison said, when he comes in, I want to explode with combos and then back out smartly. Dennison stressed to us, smart entries and very smart exits, but on the entries, not just one punch, throwing combination on the inside. Well, he, he knows his opponent has great power, so he's got to avoid these big power shots, and when his opponent throws them, he's got to counter. But the thing he realized, the thing he feels like is going to be his best shot is landing these hard body shots. This is the BKFC debut for Trevor Bradshaw. 
He's had 15 pro MMA bouts, two in professional boxing. Bradshaw on our fighter meeting said, I'm a naturally aggressive fighter, but I feel that I'm evolving into being just a brawler, into being an aggressive fighter who also has very good technique. Well, the thing he really wants to focus on right now is his head movement and his footwork. He understands this is bare knuckle. You can't trade punches. He has very good head movement. Feels like he gets inside, into range, into position with that, and lands those hard knockout punches that he possesses. Trevor Bradshaw is naturally right-handed. He told us, I'm going to keep switching stances. I'm going to throw stiff jabs from both stances. A lot of people say in and out motion, not this guy. He said he wants to get into range, and he's staying in range once he gets there. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and silver. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 157.6 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of 16 fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Salt Lake City, Utah, here is Troy the Terror Denison. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 160.9 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 17 fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of West Haven, Utah. Here is Trevor Bradshaw. And our referee in charge of the action, Dave Selyusted. Troy Dennison said, I believe Trevor Bradshaw will be at his most dangerous and effective at round number one. Dennison said, I have to get through the opening round, and then I will turn up my pressure in round two. Round number one, blue trunks for Trevor Bradshaw immediately off from scratch. Swing and a miss for Troy Bradshaw. He's in the black trunks. Low stance, tight guard for Trevor Bradshaw. Open guard from the outside goes Troy Dennison. Dennison entry on the overhand left. Good left hook not there for Dennison, where he set it. Bradshaw just has nothing but belief in his power. He just feels like he's got to land one big shot. On the duck under. Bradshaw pulled back that right hand. Stiff jab, counter jab right back from Bradshaw after Dennison landed. Dennison long with the right hand. The jab from Southpaw. This is exactly what I thought this fight would be like, Sean. These guys going at it the entire time. Stalking pressure now for Trevor Bradshaw. 110 remaining round number one. Bradshaw on the feint on the jab. Dennison does have a lot of knockouts on his own. Almost all of his wins come by knockout. To the inside, big overhand right. And this is where Bradshaw wants to be right now with his opponent's back pushed up against the ropes. for the finish he knew he had his opponent hurt all he had to do was land one shot he already had Dennison badly hurt the referee didn't want to let that go very long he could tell by the way he let the fight go as soon as Dennison hit the ground again they stopped it didn't even need to count because you could tell he was hurt from the first knockdown excellent refereeing from Dave Selyustad and this is BKFC debut absolutely no reason to count on the second knockdown 
Selyustad bringing an end to this fight. And the win with emphasis in his BKFC debut for Trevor Bradshaw. Chris, go back to our fighter meetings. Troy Dennison said Trevor Bradshaw will be at his most dangerous, most effective in round number one. Dennison used the phrase weather the storm. He said, I have to weather the storm in round number one. I think then that my opponent will fade, and that's when I'll turn up the pressure. But he simply could not weather that storm. Massive punches on the entry on the inside Brad from the victor, Trevor Bradshaw. Bradshaw did exactly what he should have done. He waited. He wasn't going out there while he waited for the right openings. Didn't throw many punches early on. Waited till he got the precise moment and unloaded on his opponent. He was prepared to go longer distance. This guy, from talking to him, told me how much he had left in the tank and how he never felt like he got to showcase his true skill set. And he feels like bare knuckle is exactly where he needs to be. We've seen other fighters like this, Sean. Not the greatest oh. MMA record because people took them down, hit them, didn't let them just sit there and trade punches the way they want to. Bradshaw's that guy. He feels like he's here to make a lot of noise in this division. Not without adversity. You see the cut, bridge of the nose, the victor Trevor Bradshaw Troy Dennison tried to stay on the outside was throwing the jab was throwing long hard straight punches but Bradshaw Christian so effective on the inside just waited for the right time like I said he had a beautiful strategy understood the punches were gonna come played defense waited to get in the right position and you could just tell as the fight was going on he was in the position he wanted he was pushing his opponents back against the ropes deciding when and where the fight happens and when he gets you in that spot it's hard for him not to land one power shot nice moment between these two utah fighters we send it to jeff houston Woo! ladies and gentlemen our referee at charge dave selustad steps in and calls a stop to the fight at one minute 55 seconds into round number one for your winner by ko trevor bradshaw Huge win for Bradshaw there, Sean. This is the first step for him to come and show exactly what he's made of and why this is the sport for him. Troy Dennison was finding success on the outside, but then Trevor Bradshaw came to the inside. Huge entry right hand, huge inside right hand. Two knockdowns to the finish. The winner by way of first round KO, Trevor Bradshaw defeats Troy Dennison. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC56 at BareKnuckleshop.com. There's a huge selection of hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. So place your order now at BareKnuckleshop.com. You can use promo code BKFC56 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. Well, here we are here at the Maverick Center in Salt Lake. And folks, I just got done talking to the president, David Feldman. I said, David, this is the first fight of the night and this place is almost full. You don't see that in the fight game. You just don't see it. It's happening right now in Salt Lake City, Utah. It is incredible. Spoiler alert, we are sold out for BKFC 56, the biggest card in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship history and how fitting because this is the biggest year of the BKFC yes it gets better year by year but this year was something incredible we started it off in Myrtle Beach South Carolina and probably had the fight of the year with Keith Richards and our current bantamweight champion and Justin Scoggins and then how about knuckle mania number three absolutely incredible in Albuquerque New Mexico that is where you saw that amazing comeback by Lorenzo Hunt over Mike Richmond. So many great events there in the first quarter of the year. 
And then that leads us to the next part of the year. And of course, the big monster mega card, BKFC 41 in Denver, Colorado, the first time we were ever in Colorado. And it was star studded. Mike Perry and Luke Rockhold. It was Chad Mendez and Eddie Alvarez, Faria and Rawlings. Absolutely insane. And then of course, you remember when Conor McGregor broke the internet and was in inside of our BKFC ring. That happened in the second part of 2023. If you think, how can we make it any bigger than that? Well, we do. We go to the third quarter. We go back to Albuquerque. And not only do we have John Dodson fighting for the Flyweight Championship, which he won in his hometown, we had the influencer, mega YouTuber, mega streamer, mega TikToker, Bryce Hall, who is here tonight getting a win against an accomplished fighter in G Perez. That happened in Albuquerque. Absolutely amazing. That was just the third part of the year. And that brings us to this, the last quarter of the year, where folks, we had a matchup in Thailand that the combat sport world had to see. Pukau and Senchai, that just happened a few weeks back, but it has been loaded. And that leads us to where we are tonight. BKFC 56, the biggest event in the promotion. Now we take a look at what is coming up. Our upcoming schedule brought to you by MIP 45. We're gonna start off the year back in one of our hot spots, Albuquerque, New Mexico, January 27th. It is the Prospect Series. This is where we find the next generation of BKFC fighters. Then our first numbered event of the year, February 2nd, at one of our home away from home. It is Hollywood, Florida. It's the Big Guitar. It is the Hard Rock in Hollywood. And then that leads us March 2nd, the very first time that we step into Canada. It's going to be the Prospect Series. Edmonton, Alberta, going to be tremendous. Folks, we are so excited for 2024 here in the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. And that leads us to this. Let's take a look right now at the OnlyFans exclusive look. She is your reigning women's flyweight champion, Christine Faria. Look at the laser focus in her eyes. Bad blood in this one, folks. Christine Faria ready to defend that title. And here she is, Beck Rollins back from down under. Once again, the first ever women's champion, Beck Rollins. She's back. We saw the fight at 41. This is the rematch. And these ladies do not like each other. Sean, Chris, man, this crowd. Do you feel it in the air right now, Sean? You've been here from the very beginning, not too far away from here, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and it's led to this. It's a beautiful thing. Let's talk about the co-main event, though. That's what people want to talk about, where these women have got themselves into the co-main. It's a big moment for the women's division. The rematch for the BKFC women's 125-pound strap. Chris, the champion, Christine Faria, versus the original queen of bare knuckle, Beck Rawlings. Beck Rawlings getting wins on BKFC 1 alongside you on BKFC 2 and then on BKFC 4. She went to Bellator. She is back in BKFC. These are not just two of the best female fighters on the roster. These are two of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters across everything on the BKFC roster. And, Sean, very interesting here. Both these, they fought once before not long ago in Usually when you have a fight like that, both people, they know who won the fight, and they're like, okay, I'm going to have to make adjustments. In this fight, though, both women feel like they were going to win that fight. They both felt they were doing very well. They liked the flow of the fight. So really, it's kind of different than most rematches. There's nothing to correct. They feel like they just have to do what they did last time, and they're going to win this fight. Somebody's obviously right, and somebody's going to be wrong. So we're going to find out tonight, have any corrections been made, or are they just going to keep going with the same game plan they did last time? Thank you so much, gentlemen. It is time to keep the action rolling here at BKFC 56. Let's take a look at your Crescent Tools Tale of the Tape. A really intriguing bout for you now in the cruiserweight division. Keegan Vandermeer versus Esteban Rodriguez. Sean, these guys are very big individuals. Look, six foot four, six three. Both have 81 inch reach. Those are huge. Only difference I see here, Vandermeer does have a little bit bigger fist, three centimeters bigger. Let's see if that can make any kind of a difference. More surface area. 
two wins at BKFC for Esteban Rodriguez. His most recent victory occurred May of this year. He defeated Jacquees Williams by first round TKO. And that right there is exactly what the Mohawk, as he calls himself, is all about. Jumping on people right from the beginning, pushing the pace, says he doesn't want to let anybody out of the first round if he can deal with it. He's going to come and put the pressure on. No hard shots the entire time. Continue to knock you down if he can. Take you out. Likes to be on the inside, grabbing that tie plum, throwing punches, pushing the opponent around. He feels like he can push a pace better than anybody, and people cannot take his power when he delivers it. This is fight number four in BKFC for Esteban Rodriguez. He's also had five pro MMA bouts. In our fighter meeting, Rodriguez said, I've really been focusing on slowing down and showcasing my technique. Ironic, because Chris, through his opening three bouts in BKFC, Rodriguez has been one of the fastest starters off of scratch in promotion history. Well, he wants to jump on his opponent right away, but then if he doesn't get the knockout right away, then he wants to slow it down, showcase his footwork, his skills, the things he's been working on. Feels like he wants to be less hittable, throw more jabs, wants to make sure he understands exactly his opponent is a good counter puncher, doesn't want to be there to get hit. Both fighters very complimentary about each other. Of his opponent in this cruiserweight bout, Keegan Vandermeer, Rodriguez said, this is, quote, fire versus fire. Rodriguez said of Vandermeer, he's got really good technique, he's really explosive. I have to meet his pressure with pressure, but I have to meet it with smart pressure, not reckless pressure. He has to watch out for those power shots, overhands, check hooks. Can't deal with those from his opponent. Must apply pressure, push him around, take away those long arms that his opponent has to land those hard shots. Keegan Vandermeer enters 2-0 in BKFC. His most recent victory occurred this past September when he defeated Dylan Weinmiller by first round knockout. And Dylan Weinmiller is an absolute animal, but that's all it took right there. You can see right there, Vandermeer, great power. We don't have many guys who can back up, throw a punch, and hurt you. You have to be coming forward on his back foot, backing up. Vandermeer landed the left hook, knocked his opponent out. That just shows the kind of power that this guy has in both hands. Once again, if he lands a good clean shot on you, most people so far have gone down. Keegan Vandermeer set for bout number three in BKFC. He's also had one pro boxing bout. Vandermeer told us in our fighter meeting, he wants continual movement. He said of my head, my feet, and my hands. And as I'm moving, I want to land hard body shots. As Esteban Rodriguez was complimentary of Keegan Vandermeer, so too was Vandermeer and Esteban Rodriguez. Vandermeer said he's physically strong and he does extremely well on heavy forward pressure. However, Vandermeer said if Rodriguez cannot maintain that forward pressure, I think he really slows down. Well, Vandermeer said he feels like he is a much better boxer, so what he needs to do is stay in his range, and he feels like he's going to really take away a lot of his opponent's offense. Vandermeer also told us, I cannot allow Esteban Rodriguez to push me backwards. I know he has huge knockout power. I have to stay fully focused. Movement and positioning are my two keys to victory. Has to utilize that defense to open up his opponent, but the main thing, he's got to be sharp from the beginning of this fight to the very end of the fight. That's the way he wins, by being sharp the entire time and seeing everything coming. Vandermeer said, I want to be a pocket fighter, but I can't be stationary in the pocket. I'll be too hittable. Once in the pocket, I have to continually move laterally. I love what he said, perpetual motion. That's the key for him. He's got to keep moving, can't be there to be hit. Once again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for our next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the Cruiserweight Division. Presented to you by Mitt 45. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and red. He stands six feet, three inches tall. His official weight, 204.4 pounds. His BKFC record stands at two victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, by way of Hesperia, Michigan. Here is Esteban Mohawk. Rodriguez. 
And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears green and black. He stands six feet, four inches tall. His official weight, an identical 204.4 pounds. He is undefeated in the squared circle at two and O. Oh. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of Cedar City, Utah. Here is the undefeated Keegan, the career killer. And our referee in charge of the action, Nick Behrens. Esteban Rodriguez said, I have to use excellent footwork, and that footwork has to make me an elusive yeah. target throughout. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, let's toe the line. Nick Behrens calling both fighters up to scratch. Three feet apart, round number one. Rapid fire start for both men. Green and black touch for Keegan Vandermeer. Black and red tracks for Esteban Rodriguez, who has the hard right hand. Both fighters to the body in the clinch. Both guys start the fast this time, John. It's like Vandermeer said, I'm going to outpace this guy. I'm going to outquick him. I'm going to out jump all over this guy right from the beginning. Huge swings from both fighters to the inside. Now on the turn, clinching the turn from Keegan Vandermeer. Separation, 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 separation from, from Nick Barron's. Rodriguez only has a cut over that eye. Overhand right. There's the rear right uppercut. Swing and a miss to the body goes Keegan Vandermeer. 80 seconds remaining and a ferocious and furious start to this round number one. Short out of the hand in the clinch from Rodriguez. Rear right uppercut audacious from Esteban Rodriguez. Pace has slowed slightly to Chris. How could it not? As I say that, a clean one too from Keegan Vandermeer. Into the clinch, right hand. Rodriguez is back against the ropes. He's doing an excellent job keeping this cruiserweight fight moving. Long jab from Rodriguez. Long two from Rodriguez. Rear right uppercut counter overhand right. Rodriguez. Big left hook. Right hand from Vandermeer. Big left hook. Rodriguez walks through it into the clinch. Rodriguez has taken some shots that everybody else has crumbled when he's got hit with. Both fighters landing huge shots. There's a huge left hand. That backs off Vandermeer now into the clinch. Both fighters giving and receiving mightily in round number one. Right? Nick Barron's telling Esteban Rodriguez, break when I say break. Right back to it. Naked right hand just misses from Vandermeer. Uppercuts. Nice job right there. Overhand right. Counter overhand right from Rodriguez. Left hand. Sean, the thing about this is ferocious pace right here. Mouthpiece out for Vandermeer. We fight on final seconds round number one. Into the clinch. Vandermeer locks his hands to get the separation. There is the bell. Next up, round two. Wow, what a ferocious pace right there. And the thing, look at look at Vandermeer right now, Sean. He looks exhausted. The thing is, Rodriguez's last fight was like this, and he learned how to he suck it up. He learned how to go to, to the fifth to round. To to Let's him. see he if Vandermeer can do the same, because he's clearly tired right now. Both these guys are tired. Him. It's going to be who's going to be able to suck it up Reset. and push the pace right now. It's probably going to win this fight. Circle away from that overhand, okay, son? Circle away from the overhand. Hopefully this fight doesn't get stopped due to that cut. Rodriguez does have a cut over the left eye. These guys went at it right from the beginning. Look at this. These guys went at the entire time. Really, oh, that was a beautiful left hand. It was wild, but it landed hard right there. You got him hurt. You almost dropped him. Let's go. It's a very close round. It was another clean, hard shot. Now it's Rodriguez's turn. Just little small shots. Uppercut, glancing shot, but those can do a lot of damage. Hold on. Round Got number it. one started like you would expect from 125ers, not 205ers. Throw the line, gentlemen. Like Vandermeer's got a little bit more bounce Muscle in his step right now. Round number two. Both fighters swinging off of scratch to start the second round. Left hook gets through from Vandermeer. Rear right up and got again from Rodriguez. Rodriguez to the body. Vandermeer to the body. Rodriguez to the head with the right hook. Rear right up and got crushing shot. Counter right hand. Vandermeer covers up. To the body goes Rodriguez. Now to the head goes Esteban Rodriguez. Get out of There's some good uppercuts right there by Rodriguez. Vandermeer trying to work off of the ropes into the clinch. Left hand, right hand, right hand from Rodriguez. And I like the way Rodriguez is leaning on his opponent. Oh, yeah, oh. Rodriguez on the jab. He needs to keep leaning on him right there. That will wear his opponent down. And Vandermeer just seems gasped right now. Look at these punch totals right now. Rodriguez just throwing so many punches right here. Vandermeer right hand. Vandermeer playing a lot of defense here in round number two. Esteban Rodriguez playing all defense. And 
Down goes Keegan Vandermeer. I think Keegan Vandermeer is just worn out right now, Sean. I don't know if he has anything left. Seven. He's not getting out, Sean. He's gassed out. That's all she wrote. The count of ten reach and the win with emphasis for Esteban Rodriguez. That's what Rodriguez feels like he has to do. Outpace his opponent. He did it right there. He put a pace out there that Keegan Vandermeer thought he could match, but he couldn't. That's just a different style. Rodriguez did that for five rounds last time. He knows he has the heart. He has the what it takes to continue to fight. He showed it right there. What a grueling fight that is. Just sucked it up, pushed through, got the victory. I am really impressed right there yes, with yeah, what Rodriguez was able to take. Vandermeer landed hey, shots up, right up, there that have put everybody yeah, else up, down. Up, it up, didn't up, do it to up, Rodriguez right there. Rodriguez walked through those punches, kept fighting, put a hard pace on his opponent, and wore him out. I don't know many guys who are going to continue to fight at that pace, Sean. That was a next-level win for Esteban Rodriguez against Keegan Vandermeer, who entered 2-0. Both wins by way of finish at BKFC. And what I love about Rodriguez, he's such a positive guy. The whole time he's here, he's smiling, he's laughing, he's having a great time. He just brings positive energy to BKFC. I absolutely love it when he's around. Great victory for him. I mean, Keegan Vandermeer is extremely talented, extremely tough, landing extremely hard punches. Keegan Vandermeer threw, landed, took huge shots, but it was the relentless pressure, accuracy, volume, and indeed power of Esteban Rodriguez that sees him through to his third win in BKFC. And this guy, the more he fights, the better he gets. Just continues to grow as a fighter. Like I said, he hasn't fought for us that many times. That was his fourth fight. I want to see what this guy does when he gets five, six, seven fights in. How he continues to evolve, gets better. Keegan Vandermeer, you know, this is a learning experience for him. He came out so hard at his opponent. You can't do that all the time. It's so easy when you go in there and you get a couple first round knockouts. You're like, I don't need to save anything. Sometimes you do. You need to understand that. I mean, right here, we're going to look at the total strikes. Sean, they didn't go many rounds. That wasn't a lot of time to throw 155 punches right there for Rodriguez. At 88, that's a lot of punches to be thrown for that short of a time as well for Vandermeer. I mean, I know you have two-minute rounds, but, man, that's a lot of punches to throw. Our strike stats all evening long are presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Come on! And you can just see right now just how exhausted. People don't think, you know, it was only a two-minute round the first time. Try go out there and sprint, but not just sprint. Sprint with every muscle in your body, not just using your legs here. You're losing legs, you're losing arms, you're pushing, you're pulling, you're in tight. It's like a wrestling match the entire time that you're trying to knock the guy out. It's so exhausting right there when you go all out. So watch this punch right here. Different punches being thrown. It was that punch right there thrown by Vandermeer. Hurt his left shoulder, I believe. Made him not be able to continue. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge of the action, Nick Behrens, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 6 seconds into round number 2. For your winner, by K. Esteban Moha Rodriguez. Huge victory for Rodriguez right there, Sean. So, so much heart with taking those punches, so much tenacity, so much will to keep going through when you're tired and get that victory. Truly one of the best two round fights in BKFC history. Keegan Vandermeer, Esteban Rodriguez going all out from literally the open second of this fight off of scratch. The winner by way of second round knockout, Esteban Rodriguez defeats Keegan Vandermeer.
Welcome to the new BKFC app. Get monthly BKFC events for $7.99. People that are missing it are missing out big time. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive 20% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship apparel when you use the promo code BKFC56 at BareKnuckleshop.com. There's a huge selection of hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. So place your order now at BareKnuckleshop.com. You can use promo code BKFC56 at checkout to get 20% off BKFC apparel. It's cold outside, but it's red hot in this arena right now. The Maverick Center is rocking. There's not a seat to be had in this building right now. Let's take a look at the only been exclusive look. That is Platinum Mike Perry. Look at that focus, well-dressed, ready to get down to business. Perry has been undefeated in the BKFC, and he loves to get the biggest fights. Well, he's got a big one tonight against this man you're about to see there he is the underground king dad mendez one of the quickest fighters one of the most technical fighters in his generation eddie alvarez he's a dog he's ready to get it done like you said it wins for philly the home of the hustle we get wins my goodness three fights three finishes are you not entertained that's what we do speaking of three we got three title fights tonight now we've talked a lot about faria and rawlings in our co-main event what about our featherweight championship matchup if you saw the weigh-ins if you've seen the lead up kai stewart and howard davis don't like each other a bit davis is so hungry for that title but kai stewart eats sleeps and breathes that championship Adams and Terrell in the heavyweight championship out. It's vacant. There's a lot of controversy there. Adams felt like he won the last fight against Belcher. Felt like he did not get knocked out. And Terrell, he is just ready for his shot at the goal. Wow. So, gentlemen, sticking on the heavyweight championship fight, when we go back to our first ever fight there in New Orleans when it was Belcher and Adams, what a fight, first of all. Tremendous fight, but it was controversial. They felt like the count was interrupted, that it was a fast count for Adams. There was a lot going on there, but now Adams gets his opportunity, and I'll tell you, Sean, he looks laser-focused.